In this thread, first-hand stories, second-hand accepted. I've never posted about my experiences before, but I was reading a green text that reminded me of an encounter I had recently. I figured it was enough of an excuse to open a thread for others to share their experiences too. Enjoy! Be me, mindlessly shambling through Walmart one afternoon. Absolutely spaced out, not in this world, lost in thought. Think about dad. Think about his friends. Think about father's friend, Dave. Haven't seen Dave in years. Run cart into another person's cart at the intersection of arts and crafts. Oh God, I'm so sore. It's Dave, and he looks horrifying. Like a dead man walking. Shit snapped me to reality fast. Oh, hi Dave. Been a while. Didn't strike you as the kind to shop for art supplies. He just stands there without a word, staring blankly at me the whole time. Eyes wide. His skin was dry, and paler than I know it should be. His lips were cracked, and his eyes were bloodshot. It was like looking at a crackhead's mugshot, or an acid attack victim. Pick related, he was scarred similarly. Keep trying to make small talk, but to no avail. He's a fucking statue. Well, I better keep moving Dave. It was good to see you. Yeah, it was good seeing you too and on. I better get going. He fucking spoke. Even flashed me a smile and a stiff wave. His teeth looked filthy, thank god I couldn't catch his breath. Sounded like what I remember Dave sounded like, but raspier. Like someone who hadn't had a sip of water in days. Kept moving like nothing was out of place, but internally, I had escalated to DEFCON 2. The rest of my shopping went fine. Went home, put shit up, went over to my father's home. Hey dad, guess who I ran into today? Dave. You remember Dave? Dad puts his beer down and his cigarette down in the ashtray I bought him for Father's Day a few years back. Looks me in the eye, and goes, you're kidding me. The obituary section in the paper said that he died Tuesday evening. You must be mistaken. Inspect newspaper. Sure enough, Dave had died. I was in disbelief. I knew he had gone down a dark path in recent years, but I'd never imagined he'd go the way he did. Laziness claimed his work opportunities, and from what I knew then, he pretty much drank and smoked all the time. Determined to get to the bottom of this, I reactivated my dead Facebook and reached out to his kids when I got home. Each of them had more or less the same to say, he was a deadbeat, he was always degrading and undermining our confidence. He was not a good father, etc. Learned from his daughter that he had been in some sort of accident prior to his passing that left him facially damaged and scarred. MFWI spoke to a dead man walking. Tell her that I ran into him at Walmart. She's in disbelief. Tells me that it's not funny to make up sick jokes, especially with the deceased having passed so recently. Threatens that her brother is coming for me. Plot twist, he doesn't. Tell the oldest brother about it, we'll call him Bill. He believes me. Gives me his phone number and tells me to call him that evening. Do so? Tells me about a call he apparently had the night his father passed. Receive phone call from his father. Apparently, his voice sounded similar to what I described to Bill. Raspy, off. Hey Bill, I'm awful sorry I wasn't all that accepting of you as a kid. You're a good person, regardless of the fact you like men. I love you, son. That's more slash less what I was relayed. Hung up without another word. Dave to the grave, always gave the oldest shit for being gay and doing theater. I believe you Anon. I know, my sister, is just aching right now. It's a hard loss for all of us. Despite. Everything. Chat with Bill for a bit longer before hanging up. The next day, I go back over to my father's place and catch him up to speed. He's quiet for most of the rundown. Though, as I went on, I could tell all I was doing was making him sad. Drop the topic. You know Anon, he wasn't always an asshole. For context, my father's friends and associates have been dropping like flies since 2019. 
needless to say, he doesn't have very many friends these days. Even though Dave had rudely cut ties with my father, he still wished the man all the best. I think even now he longs for his friendship. He turned out some good kids though. For a dead man, maybe dad. You really saw him at the arts and crafts aisle? Yeah dad, why? He always said only women and fairies shopped in that aisle. Lafriel 3. Wave. MFW Dave went to make his peace with the arts and crafts all before passing and bumped into me. To know why he was pushing a shopping cart though. Since he's dead and all. I've got more stories of my own, that it I'd be willing to share if there's interest. As I said in the opening, I'm more interested in hearing the accounts of others. Been lurking for five to six years and used this board largely for entertainment but this shit happened the other day. Shit at green text so please excuse my prose. About four days ago my GF and I went to a high school football game that was three hours from our house. I got off work and pulled myself together so we could be on the road and at the game by the time it started. Game was shit, refs were blind. By the time we were on the way home it was quite literally the middle of the night. She's passed out in the passenger seat, I'm trying desperately to keep myself from veering either into oncoming traffic or off the side of the bridge we were going over. At some point on that bridge I saw it. I thought it was a deer at first but as we got closer and the thing became clearer in the headlights I saw that it was some morbidly deformed dog. Not in a gross way, just nothing was proportional to where it should be thing looked like a chihuahua that got it on with a moose. The shoulder easily came up to the top of the windshield of this SUV I'm in, think like 4 to 5 feet, and the head had all of its skin stretched toward the back as if in a snarl but cartoonishly exaggerated. Eyes were pitch black from what I could tell and damn near bulging out of its skull. Granted, all of this was observed in the matter of a few seconds in the middle of the night. Thing followed us for a while. I'd catch glimpses of it in the rear view and sometimes even ahead of us before it'd dip off in the woods and the entire rest of the ride was stupid nerve wracking. Got home and GF doesn't believe a word of it even if she's being polite and going along with it. Yet to see it in town but I've had a horrible feeling gnawing at me ever since. Only thing I can think of is chupacabra but things just don't line up perfectly so if anyone can help ID this thing it'd be appreciated. My only, visual, paranormal experience. Haven't green texted in years, so bear with me. Me, probably 21. Spent a great deal of time at my best friend's house, he's a year younger than me, same birthday. Smoking pot, playing video games, the usual. His house is in between a mile or two from mine, I would always come home in the early hours of the morning, anywhere from 1 to 4 a.m. For the sake of the story and my best recollection, let's call it three. There's a road I always take to get home, it takes you through the condos. Every time I hit this street, there's a street lamp that starts flickering. I always get nervous thinking about it, perhaps a cause of the nerves itself anywho, just like every time, I round the corner and it starts flickering. It's always sketchy and this time is no different, I get a little pep in my step and keep on trucking. There's a small shopping center about a quarter of the way down the street. Convenience stores, restruants, pick related as I pass the shopping center I glance over and in the second shop from the left, I see a white pale figure cross across the door from one curtain to the other. It looked like someone in a dress, floating across. It was so quick but I couldn't force myself to look again. My blood ran cold and I moved a little faster. Once I got to my turn I ran home most of the way and didn't take the road for a while. When I did, I didn't dare look across the street. Looks like the curtains are still there, not sure if it's the same business now or not. I've had a few encounters. Nothing too exciting, just a brief glimpse of something that vanishes quickly. Been touched a few times by invisible hands. Seen a UFO once, saw what might have been Bigfoot seen a shadowy little girl in my house like three times, a pale thing peeking down a hallway once. Been spoken to by a disembodied voice while chilling in the rain years ago. Pop sometimes has prophetic dreams. 
had SB5 times before learning break it. Saw a massive shadow run down some stairs, heralded by the smell of wood smoke. A ghost of a cat, that sort of shit. Never anything like your smell of iron and the skinwalkers. Just brief, WTF was that, encounters. But the most recent thing that's happened to me that I'd say might be paranormal is much more boring than any of that shit. I had left my room to go do laundry, and when I came up I smelled sulfur slash eggs. Don't eat in my room if I can avoid it, and I haven't eaten any with eggs or that could make that smell in weeks. Had no source, it was just like some asshole had painted my walls with egg salad. And my house doesn't have gas that could have leaked. The attached bathroom didn't have the smell and it didn't leak into it either or out the door in the rest of the house. Opened a window, that solved it after a few minutes. First time something like that happened. Not spooky, just weird. And it wasn't like a bad fart, it legit smelled like freshly peeled hard boiled egg. Just kinda baffling. I smelled sulfur slash eggs. That's a demon anon. Yeah. That was one of my theories. The fuck did you do? Demons can't come into your home uninvited and if it was there before you, you would have known a long time ago buddy. Yeah see, that's exactly why it is just one of my theories. I don't fuck around with the occult since some of my experiences were caused, as far as I can tell me, by me dabbling cause I was bored and I have just enough sense to realize oh it could have be worse than just getting touched or hearing a disembodied sigh at night, and those particular events happened ages ago so I don't think those and this are connected. And despite having other experiences in this house none of it felt demonic, not even the aforementioned touching slash sighing. And I doubt anyone else who lives here would have done it either. So, while I am worried it might be a demon, considering nothing else has happened yet, this happened yesterday morning, and the smell was easy to do away with, I have entertained other theories as well rather than going immediately into panic mode since there's as much evidence against it as there is for it, emo. Still, probably gonna burn more incense tonight just to be on the safe side. Ah Anon, that's exactly how you invite a demon to follow you, plus the smell is usually the first sign of demonic infestation. Which is one of the other reasons I don't think those dalliances and the egg smell are connected, besides the period of time between them. Those I think just roused something more benign, I was lucky as fuck and wasn't dipping my hands into anything serious slash potent, already in the house, since for as long as I've inhabited it, small objects have had a habit of vanishing and reappearing in odd places that multiple people had checked while looking for it. Never happened to any of my things, oddly enough, before or after. Except when a chunk of halite I had somehow ended up on the floor but I haven't ruled out one of the cats knocking it off its shelf yet. But again I'm not stupid enough to rule it out entirely which is why I'm going to take precautions like incense burning, which I do anyways every couple of days, and if the smell comes back or worse, well I'll do more. Of course there's the chance, if it is a demon, it's canny enough to know if there's a long enough period between occurrences I'll just write off any connections I draw together between them. But at the moment, I see no reason to worry. Or fear. Negative emotions are like honey for those kinds of things, from what I've heard and read. Which is another of my flimsy first precautions, try not to worry about it. Don't need to toss fuel on the fire if there is one. Anon, read from the Bible, if it's demonic, which it is, you would need a holy scripture otherwise it will get much more worse. Plus whatever you do, do not acknowledge it. Yeah that's what I'm doing anyways. And there's plenty of other things it could be. Demon is actually pretty low on the list, but I get why it comes to mind first. But this house can be weird and what I think might have caused some of that weirdness could just as easily be behind this. I've got a bible if the worst comes to worse, anyways. Will update if it does in the days to come, doubt it will. But I do appreciate your concern, friend. Actually, Thinking about it, I've did had my property moved around at least once before while I was sleeping. Had my TV's remote moved from my bedside to my computer desk. Anon, depends on which type of demonic entity has infested you and or your house. Most of them act inoffensive for a long time before actually showing their true nature. But I shit you not, 
the smell is the first sign so try harder to get it to leave otherwise you won't have a nice life, I can guarantee you that. Also whatever it offers you do not take it and ignore it outright. Yup, checked, dude you have invited the thing, don't know how but you sure did it. Either that or you're living on a portal to hell. Yeah the smell not being the first odd thing in the house is one of the evidences against it being a demon, that and how easy it went away. Considering I've also smelled more pleasant scents without an apparent source elsewhere in the house is another. It's that it was a bad smell and that it was in my room that made it stand out enough to write down. Now you're just being dramatic. Still, I'll keep you posted, if I don't show back up with news it's cause nothing more happened. The portal to hell thing is just ridiculous, house may be weird but it's not hostile or unwelcoming. As for inviting it, nothing comes to mind especially since my dabbling was really tame and not of beckoning, calling or summoning sort. Some assholes have briefly inhabited the house, and their lingering negativity could have drawn something in but they weren't that bad. Just assholes and bitches. Hell some of the things I've seen like the shadow girl and would smoke shadow only showed up while they were here and not before or after. Still appreciate your concern, but I think your worries are overblown and far too dramatic. Not everything spooky becomes a horror movie you know, in spite of what some green texts would have you believe. Okay Anon, hope you're right but just take extra precaution. I will. This happened in my childhood home. B me. B 2000 I think. I was in the 7th grade. I lived just over a mile from the school. It was spring so it's not that cold, all the snow has melted by now. Heavy rains though. This day was a heavy rain day. My mother works in the grade school with my sister and they get out an hour after I do. Not staying around my school plus I have friends that would call me a pussy if I didn't walk home with them. Walk home with them. Get home drenched. Have a dog, black lab. Get greeted at the door. There is nothing like being welcomed home by your dog. The heavy rain is turning more into a storm. I stand on the sun porch and look out at the rainfall. Lightning hits somewhere, probably the river. Lots of booming thunder follows it, like the thunder burbled and rumbled for a longer than normal quick boom. Made it home just in time. I hear the door to my sister's and mine room opening and closing. They are on the second floor. Think it could be the wind. It is howling and the trees in the yard are swaying an awful lot. The storm was a pretty good one, I like storms, I am also probably retarded a bit. Dog doesn't look phased but is also not looking up the stairs. My house was old, like 1900-ish old. The wiring was those nails with the ceramic insulators and the windows had metal counterweights in the walls, my family now is the one that is updating it. The doors start banging a little harder, and a little more regular, but not in a rhythm, and they start hitting the door frames out of sync. The door then sounds like it is vibrating back and forth as it shuts, like door is hitting the door jams and vibrating back like a cartoon. It makes a sound I have a hard time describing. It was like moan of a creaky door but I could hear the door shaking back and forth as it was swinging shut. It sounded almost like a creepy auto-tune before auto-tuning was widely known about. I can only picture the door acting like a tuning fork but I did not hear them slam into the door jam or the wall. They do this for a minute or two. They then slam shut. Both doors, at the same time, and with force. The dining room table was kind of a catch-all at this point in time. My sister and I played sports year-round, and both parents worked so we were not home to eat there anyway. Clean's laundry was there waiting to be put away, papers, bills and my sister's field hockey stick. I grabbed that, and my dog. I have to lead him by the collar to the stairs. I have to also verbally coax him up. He is not fighting me hard but does not want to go up there. Was very very reluctant. He never disliked going upstairs before this or after. I drag him up to the landing. The stairwell was pitch black and there are no windows in that part of the house. The stairs start one way and cut back on themselves via a landing. Every one of my friends at some point either tripped or complained heavily about the layout and size of the stairs. 
make my way all the way up the stairs to the landing in front of our doors, two landing areas. Both doors are closed, that is why it is so dark. I open my sister's first because you can see the whole room. Tactical Brain.N 64007. My room wraps back because it is in a L shape. Can't see the whole room, so I started with the easier one to inspect. Go to open my sister's door. My dog immediately headed downstairs when I let go of his collar to open the door. Thanks a lot. Her room looks clear. Check her windows, all have the winter storm glass still in them, and are all shut and locked. Nothing is broken. No one in the closet. I then go to check my room. Same as sisters. Empty, all the windows were still set up for winter and locked. We had solid glass to help insulate in the winter with screens for the summer. Again old home. No one could have snuck past me when I was inspecting the room because just about every stair had a creaky spot on them. The stairs were and still are well worn. Parents still live there. I am pretty intimate with those stairs not only because it felt like I was ascending to my room in a tower sometimes, but they were the bane of my existence when I was trying to sneak in when I was in high school. I knew them extremely well by that point and could make it about halfway up them before I would make noise. Go back downstairs and wait for everyone to get home. Storm still rages into the night but the house is not creaking and the doors were left open, and they don't make any more noise. Still don't know what any of that was. That house still feels like it is alive maybe not alive but like it was or could be. Old house have a lived in energy that is hard to describe. Anyone know what I mean by that? I'll give you two examples. The first is he, the second one not so much. Be me, late summer slash early fall 2018. Homie comes over with a chick friend of his, they both wanna smoke me out for always being nice. Fuck yeah free weed. Not an indoor smoking Dagon, so naturally, we head outside to the backyard. Smoking. Smoking. Can hear the homie listening to TikTok, so could our chick friend. Hey, is that one of those green text tic-tics? Double take dot jpeg. The clueless, naive white chick knows about green text. Ask her if she browses. As you may have guessed, she doesn't. I like reading them though. This is where the fun begins. Hey, not to spook you, but my house is haunted. Like, pretty darn haunted. She chuckles and tells me she doesn't believe me, that it's just made up internet nonsense. Tony here can corroborate. He's been locked out of the house twice with me already. At this point in time, at least. She doubles down and insists we're just fucking with her, but we're both dead serious. She stops doing that antsy white girl giggle. Geez guys, you didn't need to get so serious. Homie and I just look to each other, giving one another that silent affirmation, this bitch trippin'. We go back to what we were doing for a time before our mutual friend goes. Hey, do you think we can head inside for a bit? The heat is starting to get to me. She says, wearing sweatpants and a woolen hoodie. Even though Tony and I are chilling, we elect to go inside. Backyard, garage, house. Except, we don't proceed beyond the garage. The door leading from the garage to the house, apparently, locked behind us on the way out. Show Tony, show bro sister, the knob won't budge. He, You're funny anon, you locked it from inside on accident. Bitch telling me that I locked our ass outside on a 96 degree day, yeah right. Tony and I both tell her we're not playing around, and that this very thing has happened before. She ignores us, and goes back to using her phone, typical. Fortunately, I had made it a habit to keep my house keys on me since I had gotten sick of being locked out because some intangible fuckstick has elected to bar me from my home. Fuck you. We go out through the garage door and close it behind us before coming into the house. Upon entry, Tony and I insist that bro sister comes with us to check the door. Again with this. Give it a rest. Bitch please dot png. She finally drops the attitude and comes along with us. 
We get to the door, and sure enough, the doorknob is. Brister just rolls her eyes and says see. I knew you two were just playing. Amid her I told you so BS, I realized something that enabled me to shut her up. Hey, now you hold it. Looky here. Point to the deadbolt. The deadbolt is fastened. She fails to grasp what this means. Sis, I don't have the key to that lock. The only way to fasten the deadbolt is from within the house itself. Smug white girl attitude goes out the fucking window in 420 parsecs. You're kidding. No. No no. You're playing. Bitch, do I look like a magician? Tony backs the claim up too. Said that regardless if he or I accidentally locked the doorknob, we couldn't do the bolt. Eventually, Brister just gives up and goes full basic bitch moment. I can't be here right now. This is too much. No no. Tony and I know she's just tweaking. Probably. Afterward, he and I came to the conclusion that the reality of the situation was just too much for her feeble mind to handle. She goes home, and we go back to the backyard to finish our session. Tony goes home later that evening. That's the funniest lockout to date. The next story isn't so much, but there isn't as much to tell. So it'll be shorter. The contrast between this encounter and the next one I'm gonna detail is pretty big. So while I'm writing it up, I'd love to hear what y'all think. I had another instance where I got locked out with a homie on a hot afternoon. We'll call him Ted. Ted wasn't having the best time of things, and asked me if he could come over. Naturally, I agreed. Tells me about everything that's going on. From the sound of it, things have just not gone his way. For a number of reasons. Asks me if I'm up to smoke him out. Nigga what? Give him a thorough questioning. He smokes ciggies, but has never had a taste for weed. Seeing how adamant he is, I elect to smoke him out. Beats letting him figure this out on his own. We move to my patio. Here, there's a small space where we use to keep the washer and dryer. Pick related, it's the spot. Instruct him on how to properly smoke from a bong, but he's a bit uncertain eventually, Ted manages to take a rip, but a fatter one than I intended. By the time he wishes to head in, it had been about an hour or so. So the temperatures were rising, needless to say. No water, either I help him to his feet and shuffle us over to the door. It doesn't open. It doesn't open. Fuck. By this point, Ted's busting a sweat from smoking big for the first time on top of the rising temperatures. We're in a west-facing space. The sun is starting to set. We'd been there for nearly three hours cooking our asses off talking about life and shit. Before my family finally arrives and lets us in. Hey, why'd you lock yourselves out? We didn't. You must've, even the deadbolt was fastened. For reference, the patio isn't a space I can easily escape. It'd require me to climb onto my roof, and I couldn't reach it. At any rate, I didn't come here to just post about funny doors. Y'all are here for that demon shit, demon shit coming right up, be me, 2021-23. The occurrences have slowly begun to ramp up as time goes on. Doors standing ajar, despite no one having opened it, happen to the fridge. TV turning on in the middle of the night, etc. Eventually, my house keys go missing. Leaving me super on edge about leaving the house, let alone stepping into the backyard. Don't see them again until recently in 2023. Noises in the attic space and the garage at night started up eventually, I don't remember when, but I know in the last three years they've become stupid prominent and difficult to ignore. I had someone visiting me recently, and during their time here, whatever's lurking in my home had a penance for fucking with her. Stupid bad. Nightmares, hair pulling, shit going missing out the wazoo both of hers and mine. Over the course of her stay, the activity ramped up 4x. One night, a homie and I are out back smoking along with my guest. At some point, she gets up to go to the restroom. Meanwhile, 
Homie and I lurk in the garage. We're beneath the entrance to the attic. I had never been up there by that point, not once. Didn't feel like getting a face full of whatever awaits me up there. Charlie the asbestos monster, giver of mesothelioma. BSing about Hoochit, when we hear something above us. Ignore it, until the sound of something approaching catches our ears. Sounds like someone squatting on the beams, slowly shifting toward us. DEFCON 2, got into high gear and booked it outside. Gathered our items in order to smoke on the patio instead of the backyard. The further we are from the garage, the better. Only, upon re-entry, the cover to the attic is noticeably shifted open. We weren't having it, not one goddamn bit. About dropped the bong in the process of hotfooting it. When Femfriend exits the restroom, she sees us in the hallway. Worked up, arms full of our items. Hers included. Asks what happened. Tell her, she believes us. Pick related, it's the attic and the door that locks behind you. As my guest spends more time here, more of her shit goes missing. As all good things do, the visit comes to a very unsavory end for all involved. Regardless, fast forward to last week or so. Probably a week and some change. Going out to the backyard for a smoke. The attic cover is, once again, ajar. Motherfucker. I'm alone in the house, and not about to have some beyond the grave Dave fucking with me in my own home. But first, let me get that rip. With my nerves settled, I began to think things over. I wasn't gonna get punked by some ethereal bastard, it's my home. This is my domain. Fuck it, time for the ladder. Get the ladder, set it up beneath the crawl space. I really didn't wanna, but if I were to back down now, I'd be a double bitch, mama didn't raise no bitch. I pushed the cover aside and poked my head into the space with my phone's camera flash illuminating the space. At first, I couldn't see anything beyond wood framing, insulation. However, as I ascended the ladder some more, I could see something at the back of the attic. Particularly, in the area of the attic above my bedroom. Against my better judgment, I crawled along the rafters in a manner I imagined similar to what was causing that shuffling my homie and I heard. I'm like, seven feet from the spot when I begin to make out what's there. Missing belongings, more than just mine, shit that went missing back in 2016 from an ex of mine. A pair of glasses, and her boots. My house keys, and the state ID that I lost years ago when I went on a road trip. My previous guest's panties, Sennheiser headphones, and her special blue comb that she holds close to herself dad's birth certificate. I sat there in the stuffy warmth of the attic for a bit longer. Trying to wrap my head around what the fuck I just found. Taking a page out of my friend's book, I said fuck it and moved on. Gathering the items closer to the entrance of the attic so I wouldn't have to spend more time than necessary. Then put all that shit in a box. I don't want to look in it, mostly because of the sting I feel from recent events. I still have all the items. Pick related, it's some of the crap I found up there. I think you can see some of the dust on the lens. I don't know what's been lurking in my home, but as far as my recent guest goes. All the fuckery it committed toward her, in hindsight, was almost like a sign that she was bad fucking news. Who knows? Go figure. Be me in 6th grade. An hour or so after sunset. Be talking to best friend at the time in a local playground. Suddenly see something happening over friend's head. It's as if someone took a piece of chalk and began drawing on the sky. Trail starts on the right and begins slowly moving left in an arch, part labeled 1. Is perfectly stationary exactly as if the sky were a green board and someone was drawing on it. Be dumbfounded at a loss for words. Friend notices and asks, what? Just point over his head. At this point it is nearly at part labeled 2 after maybe 5 to 6 seconds. Just as friend turns to look part labeled 2 instantly appears, no more drawing. Another instant transpires as friend and I witness the entire formation vanish in a blink. Brothers GF at the time also witnessed. 
still to do this have not heard of anyone with an experience even remotely similar. Laugh when people say it was some sort of shooting star or comet. I don't have the scariest story but it's stuck with me for years. First post here in first green text so apologies if this isn't done correctly. Be me, early spring 2018. Plan on eating a small amount of acid with my ex GF and two friends. Get the idea to ask my grandpa if we can stay at one of his cabins for a weekend. He says that's fine and no one can think of a better option. Fuck it, 8 hour drive to middle of bumfuck nowhere Pennsylvania. Show up after dark and struggle to find driveway entrance for a while due to fog. Finally make it down the mile and a half driveway to classic spooky cabin. Grandpa meets us and shows us how to work the heaters and shit then leaves to go sleep at his main cabin about 45 minutes away. Eat some fast food we got on the way out of civilization, watch ET VHS and go to bed. Wake up on the basement floor where we made our palates feeling great. Everyone eats a little bit of acid and we venture out into the woods. Having fun staring at trees and shit when a friend suggests we go to the nearest city to walk around and people watch. Not the greatest idea but we get in the car and start our journey. Takes a little while to reach the city but we laugh a bunch, look at statues, and listen to some music on our phones. When we get there. Getting late so we head back. Trip turns bad when we get back to the cabin and everyone starts freaking out after a friend says it feels like we're being watched. Think nothing of it at the time, wait out the come down, and everyone is relieved to be sober again. We all chill out with another movie and some beers when I get the bright idea to suggest a different sleeping arrangement for the night. Grandpa has a broken down camper in the driveway that I used to smoke weed in when I was younger. Seems like a fun idea to get everyone to sleep in there so I can relive my druggy childhood memories. Grab our shit, get to the camper, and we talk for a while. Next to the camper there's a big outdoor carport. Behind the carport the ground slopes upward toward the tree line. I'm laying in the highest bunk of the camper with my XGF when I hear a noise coming from outside. There's an open window directly above where we're laying so I ask her to stay quiet for a moment while I lean up to listen. Hear indistinct voices coming from the direction of the tree line. Think about how there are no other houses in the area for many miles. Freak out a little bit but I can't hear what's being said. Hop down off the bunk and ask my friends to be silent. They think I'm fucking with them so they keep talking and making jokes. Get as serious as I can and ask them to please shut the fuck up. They stopped talking and I watch their faces drop in panic. We all hear the voices. Still can't make anything distinct out so one friend leans his head slightly out of a window to try and hear better. He turns around with an even more panicked look on his face and says that it kind of sounds like our voices. We are all silently shitting ourselves at this point. The friend who leaned his head out of the window suggests that he and I go outside to investigate. Get a sinking feeling in my gut thinking about approaching mysterious forest voices but agree to walk outside with him. The voices have been talking in a sort of loud whisper this whole time. We step outside and my friend accidentally lets the camper door slam shut. The voices stop. We stop moving. We wait for a few minutes and hurry back into the camper. Whatever or whoever is out there starts talking again after we're in the camper for a couple minutes. It's past my grandpa's bedtime at this point but we make a plan to run to my car and drive the 45 minutes to his other cabin where he is currently staying. We bolt out of the camper, get in my car, and peel out of there. Everyone is silent on the drive. We get to the other cabin and make beds on the floor of his guest house. Wake up and grandpa is confused as to why we're there so we explain what happened. He follows us back to the cabin immediately. As soon as we all arrive he points out that there is a radio in the carport and laughs off the whole thing and goes inside to make breakfast. We investigate and the radio is unplugged. We plug it in and it's not even tuned to a station so it's just static. 
MFW no one believes the story when we get back to our home state because we had done acid earlier that morning. I've also got another interesting thing about this story that I didn't think was significant until years later. When we arrived at the cabin after our outing, the sun was going down. As it got darker we noticed a tree way off in the distance that had a sort of red glow to it but we brushed it off as lingering visuals from the acid. Two years later my dad went up to that cabin to help my grandpa with a project and he left my dad alone while he went to sleep at his main cabin every night. One of the nights my dad was up there alone he saw a tree off in the distance with a faint red glow. The next day when he asked my grandpa about the glowing red tree he said he'd never seen anything like that before and that was that. He didn't want to talk about it anymore. When I saw my dad after he got home he told me about the red tree and that's when I told him my story. Could be an insignificant detail but thought it'd share. Not really a scary thing, but might be that I've heard something supernatural. Be me, Ruski, circa 2002. Spending summer in a village riding bicycle all day with my friends. There was an abandoned church. It hasn't been used as a church since the revolution, commies turned it into a warehouse or something. First floor was open, kids used to draw with chalk there all over the place. Basement was sealed. Riding bicycles one day with my friend. Approach abandoned church. Approach one of the windows to the basement. I keep telling my friend something about how Warcraft 3 is an amazing game. I notice that he's not listening to me. He's trying to listen to something in the basement and he looks disturbed. I shut up. He shouts into the window. We both hear female voice, sounding like it's far away. She's either singing or just saying ah or something. It didn't sound evil, but I dunno, ethereal. We silently back off the window and start walking towards our bikes. Hey dude, what was that? No idea. Horrified rush to the bicycles and get away from the church. Maybe there was someone near the other window, dunno, but we didn't see anybody. Pickerel is the church, how it used to look like. A priest came to the village the same year, the church was repaired afterwards. Be me, a nurse, on my way to work this evening. Notice license plate image 1, on the highway. That's a cool name for a business or a YouTube channel or something. Shit my pants on the way to work, vomit when I get there. Tell them I can't work tonight and apologize. Head back home the way I came. Pass license plate image 1, same car, same highway, opposite direction. Think man that's weird, what are the odds they stayed in that area and left in the exact same amount of time I did? Long drive home taking off ramp to my neighborhood. See image 1 license plate in front of me, continuing on highway as I exit. Well, that's impossible. I passed them earlier, and was weirded out enough to keep an eye on all license plates the whole way home. Anyone have any thoughts? First time posting by the way. Hi T6. Posted this before but it's pretty much all I've got story-wise buy a piece of rural property a while back. Go out and stay on the weekends, clean the place up because it's overgrown. Notice weirdness starting to happen. Stuff moved around, little things missing. It's not trespassers, the soil is a powdery volcanic type that holds onto footprints for well over a week if it doesn't rain. Whatever, it's probably me being forgetful. Continue to do work. Cut fire line, remove dead branches, build this or that. Weirdness increases. Come back some weekend to find that lawn chairs I had on the roof of my cabin were flipped upside down and folded up. Excuse me what the fuck dot jpg no footprints but my old ones from the previous weekend. Struggle to rationalize it, decide on trying to forget it. Next weekend bring my dad with me. Gonna help me cut a bunch of brush around the cabin for fire prevention. We cut and wood chip for hours, clear a ton of brush. End of the day I start barbecue ying. Dad says he's headed up the hill to the outhouse, back in a few. A few minutes later my phone rings. It's my dad. 
What the hell, is he out of toilet paper or something? Pick up and say hello. Nothing. Say hello, what's up but louder. Hear myself through the phone. What the fuck? Go in the cabin and see my dad's phone charging on the solar battery. Therese an active call with me up on the screen. End the call. It must have been a spoofed call right? Well then why did it actually go to his phone when I picked up? Dad comes back. Tell him what happened. He looks a little freaked out and says he locked his phone after putting it on the charger. We eat steaks and drink beer. Mood's a little weird after the phone thing. Drink until dark. Despite the alcohol in my blood I still can't let go of it. Excuse myself to the outhouse for a minute. Walk up the hill to an old stump. Unwrap a Twinkie I brought with me, set it on the stump, then crack a beer and place it next to it. Say out loud into the darkness, this is for you. Sorry for cutting down so much brush. Felt a little silly, I don't do stuff like this, but didn't know what else to do. Walk down the hill and continue drinking with dad, eventually go to bed. Weirdness immediately falls off on subsequent visits and no longer feels hostile for lack of a better word. That's how I formed an agreement with whatever lives on my land. Spirits, Faye, not sure. I give them stuff on the stump once a month and just kind of talk to them slash the land when I'm there. They still occasionally do the pesky moving around of stuff bit but feels all in good fun. Also my dad was so freaked out he didn't even want to stay to make breakfast, just packed his shit and wanted to go lol. Pickerel, what I gave them this month. Bread, honey, candy, and a beer I like. I just had something like this happen to me today. Be me. Heading towards boxing training. See tall girl, maybe 1.9 meters tall, who looks like a beggar going to the opposite direction. Girl has a plastic bag with some kind of either medicine or drugs inside, mutters and laughs to herself indistinctly, weird ass deepish voice. I go to the nearest mall instead of training because I'm too tired to even contemplate being productive. Same girl as before on bench in front of mall, bag, muttering and all. Figure she took the bus or some shit, so don't think much of it. Until I see her in the store buying the exact same energy drink as me. Noping out a little at this point, go to training late. After training start going home, see the bitch still on the same chair as before. Just as I get in my apartment complex the elevator is beginning to go up. Hear the same exact muttering as the bitch emitted before, then right when she's at my floor I hear her cackle. Thankfully the elevator doesn't stop there, goes up another four floors. Never hear the elevator door open. Resolved to do some serious talking when the elevator gets down. When it does, there's nobody and nothing inside except a faint odor of decay. I have seen the same person before multiple times, always wearing the same rags. Even the one time I saw her in my boxing training. Wake up to beaming sunshine couple of months back. Look at window that I'm facing. Doesn't have curtains, just those vertical blinds. Sun is shining on them. There's a silhouette of someone's head on the blinds as if they're trying to peer in the window. Pull blinds to the side to quiz them. No one there. Nothing at all that could create that kind of silhouette. Let go of blinds. Silhouette is back. Do this half a dozen times. Definitely nothing there that would make that shadow. Keep my eye on it starts walking away. I've had this room for like 10 years and I've never seen it happen before ever, nor has it happened since. All right. First time sharing this. Husband and I doing one of our routine walks to our weed dealer. It's about two miles, we kind of space out on the journey, as the time passes faster that way. We pass by this walled off section between buildings. There is a small gap between the wall and the ground. As I'm walking past, a hand reaches out through the gap and attempts to grab my leg. I nearly tripped avoiding the hand. In pissed. I briskly walk along the wall and to the entryway of the walled zone to tell off whoever attempted to grab my leg. That they need to fuck off, I could have been hurt. Get to entryway. It's empty. 
Entire area except entryway is walled off, there is no way anyone could have left except from the entryway that was within vision the whole time. Another one I just remembered. Walking with husband in town, again. Lol. I tend to get oversensory when walking in town. I nearly bump into someone using a public mailbox, they're a thing in the UK. I quickly sidestep to avoid the stranger, tripping into husband. Husband's all, an on WTF? Tell him I almost walked into the man using the mailbox. Anon, what mailbox? The one we just passed, didn't you see it? Anon, that's an old decommissioned mailbox. No one uses them. We only use the red mailboxes. If someone tried using it, they're a retard. Look back. No one there. Investigate mailbox. It doesn't even open, it is, in fact, decommissioned. Short 1, probably not all that interesting but it's my go-to weird story. B14. Stuck working on uncle's farm because I flunked all my classes that year and my school didn't have a summer school program. I'm tasked with feeding chickens, collecting eggs, and cutting weeds. Very exciting work, I know. Wake up an hour earlier than usual at like 5 am decide I might as well feed the chickens now and check if the hens laid any eggs. Get my jeans on and my boots, uncle is still asleep. Head downstairs, TV was still on from last night and running reruns of The Simpsons. Grab the bag of chicken feed and go out back to the coop to start feeding the roosters. No eggs today. Notice the bushes rustle, see something slightly larger than a rabbit dart out of them and head in the direction of the house. Jump a little but it's not that startling, rabbits, groundhogs etc. wander onto the farm all the time. Head back into the house with the rest of the bag of feed, dropping it in its usual spot in the kitchen. Turn around and feel my chest turn ice cold as I see a tiny human head peeking into the living room, watching the TV. When I say tiny human head, I mean like someone with microcephaly, like Beetlejuice from Howard Stern. It darts away before I can scream or yell or anything. Tell uncle about it when he wakes up, thinks I'm fucking with him so he just laughs it off. Never see it again nor think about it until a few months ago and then now, same anon here, was just thinking back on the stories I've heard and I remembered a second hand story I could tell from a EMS friend of mine. He might have posted about it here, actually, as he introduced me to slash x slash, but this story of his still creeps me out. B E M S anon late at night called out into small suburbs because some dude was found bleeding out by a convenience store clerk get there on time dude is lucid but is trying to crawl away desperately suspect he's on something apprehend him and get him on a stretcher to get him to the emergency room his legs are covered in cuts bleeding heavily so hard to tell what they were caused by get him cleaned up Cuts are clearly human teeth bites. Missing chunks of flesh too, these bites went down deep into the muscle. Skip ahead after getting dude stitched up. Police interview him because the clerk had reported it as an assault, but the assailant had left. Decide to eavesdrop because I'm really curious as to what happened. Apparently the dude was meeting up with his GF behind the store. She started freaking out, threw up blood then managed to get him on the ground, ripped his pants off, and started biting his legs before running off after the clerk showed up. WTF. Cops believe him but can't find his GF. Missing person's case filed for GF, dude doesn't press charges. Be me at 14 years old in the mid-2000s. Live in rural maritime Canada. Lots of woods and trails surround my house that is just outside, but still technically in the town I live in. Love to explore the trails that have been there since God knows when, some aren't even trails people use but rare their animal trails. Be hanging out with my best friend at the time. Decide we should go for a walk in the woods through the back trails that lead out into town, at one point we mapped all the trails. One trail starts where my house is so we start there and begin walking. A little while into walking we realize that it's hard to breathe for some reason, as if the humidity was cranked to an insane level. 
we come across this spot that doesn't have many trees, the ground is all cracked and dry and we actually don't really recognize this area of the woods. We talk back and forth about where this is and how we miss this area of the woods, especially since it's about half an acre in size of just barren land rocks all around. Decide against going into town that we'll walk back to my house and ask my dad if he'll take us. We start walking back and it's taking a lot longer to get back to my house, it's literally a straight trail to my house. With one small deviation that leads directly to my house. We look around and realize that it got real cold and quiet all of a sudden. Find the deviation and think thank fuck finally. We go down the trail leading to my house. Somewhere along the way my friend disappears but I don't remember where. I end up at the trailhead where my house is, but it isn't there, it's just a cleared off space with nothing there. I start to panic, I start to feel really hot and lightheaded. I pass out. Wake up at the trailhead and everything is normal. I find my friend about 100 feet up the trail, very confused and dehydrated. We come back to my house drink like two liters of water each and are otherwise fine. It was weird AF. First time poster, be gentle. Be me. Seven or eight you can't remember exactly. Have had a reoccurring dream. It get out of my bunk bed in the dream, I walk to my closet to get my toys and then it get pulled in by a bunch of hands and then wake up would always wake up feeling uneasy so would go to my parents' bedroom and tell them about it. Fast forward like 8 years. We moved out and live elsewhere. Remind my mom about that reoccurring dream. She tells me a few years before we bought the house a child died in it. Pry more, she tells me that child died in that same room. Nothing too spoopy, thought it share. I guess I'll post a short story so the thread doesn't die. Be my mom, 12 in the 90. Be at grandma's house. Grandma takes you and your sister to a funeral. Funeral ends at around 1 or 2 AM. Go back home in pitch dark. Start feeling the air becoming colder. Start feeling like someone is behind you. Look behind you but nobody is there. Grandma grabs you and your sister's hand and starts picking up the pace. Get home. Ask grandma and sis did you guys feel it? Both say yes. Some second hand stories of a truck driver I know. Be him, driving by night at some mountainous road in Brazilian southeast. These roads tend to be poorly lit and forested on both sides. After some time driving see a guy standing besides the road. It's not like these regions are uninhabited so thinks nothing of it. After some more time see the same guy besides the road again. WTF. Then, a third time. Nope's hard. Decides to stop at a police station to sleep until morning. Another one by the same guy. Be him. Be at an old farmhouse of a relative. It's getting late so decides to go to bed. Upon entering the room see a sheet looking thing float out of the bed and get out through the window. He didn't describe his reaction so there isn't much for the second story. There's another truck driver I know that told a story a bit similar to the second one. Be him. Extracting sand illegally with some other guys at an remote region. These tend to be damp regions with tall grass. After filling his truck decides to go away before the sun rises. As he is driving away he sees something that looks like a large sheet flying in his direction in his mirror. The thing flies above his truck and disappear. Apparently a woman's corpse was found in the region some days later. These kind of places tend to be used by criminals to dispose of bodies, another guy I know told that when he was younger he used to go through a place like this to get to his job and sometimes he would come across a corpse. And one last story from the first truck driver. Be him. Driving in some remote region. Suddenly feel stomach ache, nature calls. Far away from any bathroom. Fuck. Urge to shit gets unbearable. Stops his truck besides the road and run towards a nearby river to take a shit. Car stops behind his truck. Guy gets out of car and starts running towards him. 
Apparently the guy thought he was going to kill himself and was trying to stop him. I here's another. B 2019. Driving back from the city, about 77 kilometers from me. About 1 a.m., coming back after a movie. Straight stretch of road, no houses, whole thing is a swamp. Suddenly there's a car behind me, high beams on. Car is really catching up quick and in no time right on my ass. It stays there for what felt like forever but was likely about 10 minutes it finally goes to pass by me. My radio turns to static and cuts out completely. As this car gets almost right beside me I see that it's a pretty old car, probably from the 1970s and it's brown. It comes up right beside my driver's side window. I go to look over to see who's driving. The whole car disappears like a flashlight being turned off. I am once again alone on the highway. I have multiple stories but none last long, I saw when I was a kid 20 of those UFOs coming out of one light in the sky, and when I watched from the bottom it was a triangle silhouette that you almost couldn't perceive against the black sky. I saw a ball of fire floating outside of my window once and I saw an insanely bright light once outside of my window in the middle of the night, it was illuminating my entire room in white light and I just turned around and went back to sleep for some reason. Once while I was awake and trying to sleep a bit more a thunderous voice shouted inside my head kill them all. I saw ghosts, sometimes a woman walking trough a window but disappear after, saw two of guardian statues have fire in their mouths, saw a goat man in the wild looking at my house, have seen death multiple times and spoke to Jesus two times and both of them in dreams where I woke up in the dream not remembering anything and only seeing Jesus starting to walk away, talked with Odin once as well. Used to communicate with dead relatives when I was really young and gave information about them to my family and used to tell my mom that I hated this world since it was all so heavy and that I preferred the blue moon over this place. Remember almost none of the last part but all my other family members remember. Saw a thunder man outside of my window as well when a thunder hit next to my window, saw a witch that was plaguing my nightmare outside in the real world when I woke up looking at me before vanishing. My brother and mother saw two moons, and after realizing one wasn't the moon both of them went inside real fast the home, her chanting in the hills once as well. If you want to know more about any of them let me know. Be me. Escape from the cuck 9 to 5, planning a mega solo hiking trip in the Rockies. Never to venture in a woods without some firepower. Pack the bare essentials, MREs, water filter, tent, and my .357 Magnum for emergencies. First few days, pure bliss. Nature's beauty and shit real soul cleansing stuff. Day 3, deep in the woods, set up camp in a sweet secluded spot. Night falls, sitting by the fire, munching on MREs, feeling like Bear grills. Suddenly, heavy footfalls, not like any deer or elk, much heavier. Get that prickly feeling on the back of my neck. Turn off flashlight, let the fire dim, strain my ears. Hearts thumping louder than those damned footsteps, growing closer, along with a snuffling sound. Squint into the darkness, make out a gigantic shadow. Bear easily twice the size of a grizzly, moving awkwardly. Brains going a mile a minute, remember some Nat Geo prehistoric shit I used to watch. Can't be real, right? Dig into my backpack, grip the .357, cold steel's oddly reassuring. Monster bear sniffing around, probably smelling the MRE leftovers. Maybe if I stay still, it'll just leave. If it comes close, unload the .357 and pray to every god ever. Eventually, the heavy footfalls recede. Wait another eternity before even daring to breathe normally. Morning light, finally. Emerge from the tent, witness the aftermath. Trees nearby have scratch marks. Way higher than any grizzly could reach. Ground trampled and dug up, huge paw prints everywhere. Nope out of there ASAP, power hiking like an Olympian. Later, bump into a group of hikers, share my encounter. Make a mental note, next time? Beach vacation. Fuck dinosaur bears. 
live in Celtic country, be Celtic pagan. Mostly work with Luul Fada, god of the sun, clever crafts and kingship. Finish night shift, had a particularly hard day so I decide to make a small offering. Leave some wine outside in a copper bowl, offer it to Lu in exchange for strength in Gaelic. Go to bed. Wake up next day, go into my garden. Copper bowl has been knocked over, wine spilled everywhere. A skeletonized bird has been left hanging beak down from the tree above where I set out the bowl. My face when. Quickly make an offering to an Morgan out of worry. Don't make any offerings for several weeks. I saw what for lack of a better term may have been some sort of vampire slash unknown hominid, I don't know what the fuck, in the woods once. Hunting an old growth forest, so it's kind of a tangled nightmare. Had found a dead deer the day before that had weirdly had some joints in its legs smashed, so assumed there was some sort of predator animal around like a mountain lion or maybe a bear. It's evening, not dark out yet but going to be in an hour or hour and a half. There's this particularly nasty patch of blackberry bushes that have entangled with other vegetation and even encircled and enveloped some lower areas of trees I have to get through. Say fuck it, decide to go around it because it's almost unnavigable. Notice the wood are really quiet. Not the meme absence of any noise, bugs are still being bugs and there are some birds but it's much quieter. Here and muffled almost. I'm going between some really old, tall trees, not redwoods but holy shit they come close. Chills and prickling suddenly all over my body. That, something is staring at you, feel. I look around. Out of the upper right corner of my eye I see eye shine. Look up. The thing looks mostly like a human woman, except with odd elongated proportions slash clearly some different skeletal shit. She's completely naked, slightly dusty from bark dirt and is enormous, like seven feet tall. Makes this bizarre humming sound, I can't think of an analogy for it. Opens her mouth. I don't know how else to describe it, it's like she does the grimace emoji, teeth are icy white. I literally leap backwards and take off running, head empty. Never see her again. The best example I have of what she looked like is Picrel. I wish there was a better conclusion or whatnot, but it is what it is. One feature that stuck out and is still in my mind, she was almost entirely flat chested. It took years for me to figure out why, but apparently humans are the only hominid species where females have large breasts instead of minor bumps basically. <laughs>